Okay, so today's goal is uh, to begin your understanding of memory. We've already talked about memory in the past uh, with chapter one, and we've removed it at least three times and put memory back in at least three times in this class. We're going to talk about the introduction and specifications on memory, and then you guys are going to have today, the next day, and the next day, do some reading. Watch some videos and do your research and get your PowerPoint project done next week so that when I come back, we're basically done with memory. So today is an introduction to some of the terms and stuff you're going to see in your reading. Okay? We have two kinds of memory on our motherboard. We have static and dynamic RAM in our computer. Okay? Static and dynamic RAM. Static is just that. It's static. You write to it, it's there. It stays there as long as there's power. Okay? And then dynamic RAM is a kind of RAM that it needs to be refreshed all the time, every few milliseconds. It has to be rewritten. There's a controller on the motherboard that keeps rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. And if it doesn't change, it keeps rewriting the same thing over and over and over and over again. Okay? And that kind of RAM, DRAM, is what's stored on DIMMs and RAMs. It's the system memory that we can take out and put back in. The system memory that we can take out and put back in is dynamic. Okay? What's the difference of the two? Static is what's in cache. It's fast and it's expensive. It's fast and it's expensive. That's what our CPU cache memory is made of. It's static RAM. Dynamic RAM is cheap and slower. Which is why it's our system memory, because we wouldn't be able to afford 8 gigabytes of static RAM, because it's expensive, hard to make. So the two kinds of RAM we have, we have dynamic in our memory modules, we have static on our CPU. Dynamic on our memory modules and static on our CPU, okay? So our static RAM is either our L1, L2, or L3 cache, depending, okay? And you guys have already looked at this, and this is the last thing we're going to talk about static RAM. Because you've already looked at static RAM, not knowing it was static, when you looked at your CPU cache. So what happened? Next slide. Everything else is static. System RAM is dynamic. I just looked up. Our sticks of RAM are all dynamic. Okay, these are all dynamic. They're refreshed thousands of times a minute. For a couple years, we had all of our computers that were getting from the government, they had pulled all the RAM. And I called up and I said, how come none of the computers come with RAM anymore? I'm having to spend a fortune to get old computers work again. And the guy goes, well, sir, we had to pull the RAM because there could be classified information stored. And I said, I'm not sure it was my birthday present. Hey, Senator. <laughs> OK. Uh, he said there could be classified information stored on the RAM, so we had to, we had to start pulling it. I said, well, just so you know, as soon as the power is turned off, all the classified information stored in that RAM is gone. He said to me, sir, you don't understand how to manage it. And he's looking around the room like, okay. And so <laughs> we had an extensive conversation about what computers were, uh, of which, you know, I probably know what that is. He's just spouting what he's right told there. us about. But so on, on the static RAM, it still goes away when the power is turned off. But the static RAM is faster in what's our L1, L2, and L3 cache. And the dynamic RAM is written thousands of times a minute. Every few milliseconds it's rewritten. Okay, millisecond is one thousandth of a second. Okay, because it will just degrade and be gone if it's not refreshed. Okay, so that's all I have to say about static. Put my pen in my pocket. Everything else we're talking about is dynamic and it's the system RAM that we can put in our PC, of which you guys have put RAM in and pulled it out at least three times by now, and you'll do it several more while the cap course goes on. What I'm going to install updates because I have 137 important updates to install over here. It's going to take forever. 137 updates on a multi-point system. It will be done. Okay, so we're talking about dynamic RAM, and there are some things about dynamic RAM that we need to learn. Dynamic RAM, first of all, has evolved 
over the years. This is the first kind of RAM I ever put in, this EDO RAM. Yeah, this four meg stick. <laughs> four meg stick. Four meg stick. You know how much that cost? Forty bucks. Ninety-nine dollars. What? Ninety-nine dollars. What do you just cost for a four meg stick? I have a whole bag of them. They still have the price tags on them. Uh, they have holes in them, so they make nice uh, keychains. Nice keychains, exactly. I don't know where I put them. I'll have to try to find them. So wait, you're selling them for ninety-nine dollars for a keychain? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Like uh, so, so memory has evolved to what we have today, which is right here. Okay, today's memory is all called DDR memory, and of the kinds of DDR, there's DDR, there's DDR two, DDR three, and now coming out is DDR four apparently, which I haven't even read the specs on yet. Okay. And that number just refers to the generation. First we had DDR, then we had second generation DDR, then we had third generation DDR, and now they're coming out with fourth generation DDR. Okay? So DDR stands for double data rate, and I'll just give you a little history on that. The first kind of SD RAM we had, which stands for synchronous. Dynamic, random access memory, okay? Our memory is dynamic, I already said that. We're using dynamic random access memory. This is synchronous. What does synchronous mean? At the same time. Yeah, right, so if me and Max are synchronized swimmers, we'd be going. Yeah. I already say So synchronous means at the same time, it's synchronized with the motherboard, which is why back on the motherboard project, when I said if you can't find the speed of the bus, just look at the memory speed, because they're the same thing. Okay, it synchronizes with the speed of the bus. The bus actually synchronizes with the speed of the memory. If you buy a DDR2800 stick of RAM, the motherboard will be going at 800 megahertz. Okay, so it's synchronous. So when we first had synchronous RAM, the fastest, I'm just giving you a little history, the fastest synchronous RAM, the original synchronous RAM went, went was 133 megahertz, okay? And when DDR came out, which is also SD RAM, it came out and it came out at 266 megahertz. So they called it double data rate because it was twice as fast as that. That term means nothing anymore. Okay? Double of what? It, uh, it's just DDR stands for double data rate because originally, when it first came out, it was double of 133, and now we're going at speeds of 3,000, okay? So the D doesn't mean double anymore. But originally, the DDR stood for double data rate, and DDR2, DDR2 was second generation DDR, DDR3 was third generation DDR, and DDR4, Four is fourth generation DDR, but it no longer really refers to double of anything because those only double for one day. Because DDR evolved up to 400 megahertz, okay, and then DDR2 came out with four at 400 megahertz, and it evolved up to 800 megahertz. Okay, there's different speeds in between there. DDR3 came out at 800 megahertz, and it evolved up to whatever it is today. I think it's 3200 overclocked or something, saying like that, okay? So this number refers to the generation, and in that generation, there's a whole spectrum of speeds that that generation can go, and it's all determined whether it can be taken or not is determined by the form factor of the motherboard. The motherboard, that's why on your motherboard specifications you had to list, what kind of memory does it take? Because today, we're going to talk about your next project, and your next project is going to be related to buying memory for your motherboard. So you have to have a motherboard slide that said it took this kind of memory, because now you're going to buy and present the kind. So that's kind of evolution of memory. We had SD-RAM, this was an SD-RAM, we had this SD-RAM, and then this SD RAM evolved into DDR, which is double data rate SD RAM, over time. Okay? This is what the original SD RAM looked like. It had two notches in the bottom, and it had this 
notches over here that the motherboard locks into. And then, and we used to have that when I was here, we don't have any of that anymore. Now so we only have the one notch. Now we only have the one notch, okay? DDR, that is not. The DDR only has one notch on it, okay? And as I look at the difference between DDR, DDR2, and DDR3, I can't just pick up a stick and say, well, that is definitely DDR2. It is, I know, because I looked at it earlier, okay? But when I look at sticks of DDR RAM, I can definitely see that the holes are different. I don't know if I'm the best way to hold it. Can you see that? Yeah. How the holes are different? Okay. That's the form factor of the memory. The notch moves. And it only fit in certain. And it will only fit in the one it's made to fit in. So if your motherboard says it takes DDR2, you and you're like, yeah, this DDR3 is way faster. I'm going to buy that instead. You All you'll do is break the memory of the motherboard. It's not made to go in. It's not the right form factor. Okay. It's not the right form factor. Mm. So when I look at it, I really can't tell. I have to look at the sticker in order to tell. Or in the case of students pull off stickers because they're... I gotta, I gotta <laughs> find one with the sticker and then I gotta match it up and go, oh, well, yeah, that's DDR2 because there's no sticker on it. So the only, the only way to find out is to find a DDR2 and see if they line up and then I know it's the right one. Okay, so as I look at different pieces of RAM, I have to look at the sticker, a notch, although I know one notch means it's DDR2, DDR2, DDR3, it doesn't tell me really well which kind, so I have to look at this sticker right here and say, oh, it says it's DDR3, ECC RAM, and it's a two gig stick. Okay, and that one doesn't have a sticker at all, just so you know, most of them have eight chips on them, why eight? No. What is comes in eight? Oh, a byte. Eight bits in a byte. Yeah. So every time Plus it writes so data, it writes one here, 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 to write the eight bits of data. Occasionally you'll see ones with nine, and we'll talk about why that is. Like this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on there. Okay. On MS computer, she has that cool memory. Is it different than our? No, it's just got a heat sink on top of it That's awesome. to help dissipate the heat. Okay, so synchronous dynamic random access memory synchronizes with the system clock, aka the motherboard. Okay, so if I've got a motherboard that takes DDR2 and it says it'll take, uh, well, let me hear, let me hear. And it says it will take. 800 slash 666 slash 533. That means it'll take any of those speeds. If I put a 533 stick in it, that's how fast the motherboard's going to run. Because it synchronizes with the motherboard. The memory can't change speed. You just bought DDR2 533. That's the speed the memory is. So something changes in that thing that changes the motherboard. So if I had the choice to buy 800 or 533, which one would make my computer run faster? Okay, 800 definitely would. Okay, so if you have a choice, and that's not that big of a range, but on DDR3, and we're looking at 800, 1330, well, no, there's uh, another one in there, 1333, oh, it's 1066. I'm writing out of order now. 1600, okay, if mine says that, you know, I buy 800 versus 1600, I'm making my motherboard run twice as slow, or half its capable speed. I'm not saying you're going to buy that one. If the difference between this one and this one is 100 bucks, but the difference between this one and this one is five, maybe I buy this one. It's still 30% faster but it's at least not half as slow like you would have done. So you're making choices when you do that, okay? I will tell you that in general when it overclocks, it's doing something kind of funky. I don't know that, I don't know if the motherboard actually is going to that speed. I think it is, okay? There's also a kind of memory called RAM bus. It died. It was a good try, okay? It's gone. You can't find RAM bus anymore. All you can really find anymore is DDR2, Three and now four, and I've already said I didn't even know four existed until I looked at the first page today. So it's just come out this year. Okay. 
So, there's also something that uh, a memory can have, and it's called error checking code or parity bits. Okay, this is for servers. It's my mouse. Hello, servers. Usually, usually, there are some other boards that take error correcting memory. It takes error correcting memory. Error correcting memory is both more expensive and slower. So you wouldn't want it on your gaming PC. Because more it's not, expensive because and slower. It's more expensive and slower. Why? Okay, because here's what check. it does. Here's Because it's always checking for errors every time it reads and writes memory. And this is how it does. This is what a parity bit is. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chips on there for your bits. And on a parity one, you got an extra one. Or error checking one, you've got an extra one. So you see an extra one, a ninth one, in the middle of one that has ECC. And what it does is it tries to make the either even or odd. So here's we're going to call this an even parity check. Okay, zero one zero one one zero zero. That's what it wrote. That's the data. In order to make this number even, what do I have to write in the parity bit? I have to write a one. That's all the check is. Every time it reads, it calculates the parity bit, writes it down there. Now when it writes it, reads that, or I mean when it reads it, it reads that and then says, okay, that should be one. Yeah, it's one. Okay, so those must all be written right. And it does that every time it reads and writes anything in memory. So it's slower. It happens really fast. But it still slows us down, right? It doesn't just write, read, and write, read, and write, read. It goes, write, calculate, write. Read, and calculate, yes. Every single time. Okay? So ECC memory is slower, and the motherboard has to be made to take ECC memory where you put it in and it goes meh, 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 and you're going, what's wrong? Somebody will get it in their PC for their final exam. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that memory, but I'll stick one in there, and then your computer will meh, meh, you know, you're like, you're not starting, and I'll go, figure it out, right? Okay, so error checking and parity bits are usually something the servers have, yeah. and it has to say that it takes ECC memory for that to work, okay? Something else we need to know about, I'm going to reuse this, okay? When we write into memory, think of it like a big table. And the table has columns and rows. And every single time it goes to write in here, it goes to write my numbers, the only ever there one. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always zeros and ones. So every time it goes to write, it doesn't just write like this, okay? It takes a certain number of cycles around the motherboard before the memory all gets written, okay? And the number of cycles it takes is what column and row latency is. It's called the CAS latency, column access strobe latency, and the row access strobe latency. That's how many cycles around the motherboards it takes. So if that's the case with my memory, it's called the CL number, okay? Here's a typical number, CL8, and here's a typical number, CL9. Which one's better? CL8. Eight is better because it takes me less cycles to write, okay? So when I see this number, the CL or cast latency number, I want the lowest number available, okay? It's a way to compare that most people don't know. Just like when we talked about CPUs, we talked about cache, most people didn't even know that there was some other number to look to compare a thing. It's not just about the speed. The hidden number in, in memory is this CL number. The lower number is better, it's faster, okay? It's the number of clock cycles it takes to write or read a column or row of data in my table. Okay. And I will tell you that although there, there is a number for row and there is a number for column, almost all the same number, I mean, if, if the column number is 9 and the row number is 9 on a stick of memory, so mo usually you'll just see a CL number when I look at memory. Okay, I'm going to go to a website here real quick. I'll go to Newegg and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. In fact, I already have some pulled up. Okay. So as I look at this mem, no, need to click on that. As I look at this memory right here, here, okay, most people just see this. It's 
DDR3-1333, okay? But what's the timing? And the timing down here, and the first number of the timing corresponds to the cast latency. It's a cast latency of nine, okay? I've got two sticks, identical sticks of memory. This is two two gig sticks of DDR3 SD RAM 1333. Two two gig sticks of DDR3 SD RAM 1333. $40.99, $40.99. Which one's faster? Bottom. The bottom, bottom one's faster because it has a cast latency of eight versus a cast latency of nine. It's 12% faster. I'm doing roundhouse math in my head, but how much faster? Bigger is eight than nine? I don't know. Something like that. Bigger than 10% because I've been doing nine. Anyway. Yeah, I we get my drift there. How many people knew that? Most people don't. Okay? They just look for which one's cheapest. I want this number and this number to be my guide. You know, they want the fastest they can get for the cheapest. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would go with the rating. I would go with the rating. If we didn't have that. Okay, these are both the exact same color. Actually, that one has a way better rating. I'd go with that one. You would. you go with the rating. Way better. They're both four. Yeah, but there's 439. Yeah, 439. Four four that's four. more ratings. Not, that's not better. Well, yeah. that more people thought of that than what. I, so you, you're going to go with the crowd. Peyton's like, I don't care what it says. I'm buying what everybody hey, else is buying. Anyway, what more mean? people bought this, so I'm going with that. Hey, where'd you get your clothes? Wherever everybody else is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so that's a number that you may not have known about, okay? So when we go to compare memory, those are really the only two things, because our motherboard is going to say it takes DDR2 or DDR3. Which one's better? DDR3. DDR3. That the generation, the higher generation of memory is definitely better. But the motherboard decides that. I don't. I've already got the motherboard. You've already decided what your motherboards are. Okay? So the choice is taken out of our hands. Now we have to go and compare what we can. We want the highest speed with the lowest latency. Now, if I was not comparing, uh, the, the, we're going to go mm, 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 and compare just different, uh, we're going to take this out of it so that we look at it, all DDR3, and I'm going to show you that you have to compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. So, I'm looking down at, let's see if I can find, I want all DDR3 RAM. So we can just say DDR3. Because okay. you're going to see at higher speeds, the latencies get higher. So it's not fair to compare one against the other that don't match. Okay. So here's what I'm saying. I've got this one, cast latency of 8, two, 2 gig sticks. And I go down here, let's see if I can find a much faster one. That is... 
That's the question I'm going to be asking you on the test. But if the speed is different, you can't compare it by cast latency. Okay? I could make you do math and no. say, okay, well, it takes nine clock cycles, and the average clock cycle is taking, I mean, you could do the math on that. You could, okay? Because you could figure out if there's 1,866 million cycles per second on this motherboard, and it takes nine cycles to write it, how long does that actually take in nanoseconds? And then you could go and compare it, but I'm telling you, that difference, this one's definitely faster. And you usually don't do that much math. You could. If you wanted to. But I'm also have to realize that now I've just sped up the entire motherboard too, right? Because it's synchronized with the motherboard. So maybe, even if you came out with the same number, this is your better choice, because this one now has the motherboard running with 533 million cycles per second faster, okay? Plus, it looks cooler. Look at the little blades <laughs> on it and stuff. I mean, that's gotta be worth selling. Okay, so that's our cast latency. You? Yeah. Okay, so memory speeds, when we look at them, the nanoseconds I'm just talking about is not on memory anymore. You could figure it out. You could figure out how many nanoseconds it takes to read and write your memory. By doing the math, I just said, I'm not going to ask you a question about that. I'm just saying, if you wanted to get that bit going, you could. They used to actually have the nanoseconds on the, the memory. Okay, really, what we're just looking at is the PC or the megahertz and the PC rating. The PC rating is the generation. So when I look back here, I look at this. DDR3 is PC3. Uh, it's generation the same so number. DDR2 would be PC2. Right, GDR2 would say PC2. DDR would say PC. Okay? So that's the generation of it. So the newer generation is what? Newer generation is better. But that's decided by my motherboard, right? And then faster megahertz speed is better. How much memory is installed does not determine, I hate that on there, I need to remove it from the, that's from the PowerPoint that goes in the book. That does not determine how fast the memory is. How much memory determines how fast the PC may run, but it really is not helping to determine the memory, okay? What kind of memory technology is used? DDR all uses the same technology, so that's not really a way to compare different sticks of memory. Clock rating or cast latency rating definitely is. And then is it is it got ECC or non-ECC? And the two don't mix. When I look at my stick that I just looked at, it should say down here in the specifications, in the specifications, whether it's ECC or non-ECC. And if it doesn't say, oh right here, ECC, no. Normal PC is not ECC. If it said yes, then it's a certain. Yeah, and maybe one of you guys picked one that takes ECC memory. I can't tell you because at that point you didn't know the difference, right? So if you have one that takes ECC memory, you gotta just gotta give us ECC memory. But if it doesn't, make sure you get the right one. They do not work together. Okay. So does it have ECC or does it not have ECC? Definitely affects the speed. If it's got ECC, it's slower. Okay, it's definitely slower. And I got this nifty little chart that lets you compare fast to slow. And like I said, I don't believe total RAM matters. Everything's DDR. Not really seeing rated speeds in nanoseconds anymore, although you can calculate it. We are looking at speed in megahertz. We are looking at whether it's ECC or not ECC, and we're, we are looking at your CLRL, your latency rating. Those are the three things that are going to really determine. And of those, here are the three that I'm saying. Because yes, the rated speed, whether it's PC, two, or three, but the motherboard's already decided that. And I'm not going to say which one's the fastest stick of RAM, unless they're the same. Compare more interesting which is why I asked that question. Yes. Um, in memory, is it the same as CPUs, or there's like two manufacturers, like Intel and AMD? No, way more, way more. Way so more. there's way more. Right. Did you not see all those? All those. I, I saw like two companies. Yeah, there's tons. There's tons. If I if I go over here, 
to my side of my picker here. Manufacturer, show more. These are all memory manufacturers that they've got right here. That's just of this memory that I've selected. So I've got GCL Corsair, I don't even know what that is, Crucial, Mushkin, Pony, and the, uh, the major ones. G Scale is one, Corsair is one, I don't even see Kingston on here, although that's one. Crucial is one, <laughs> Mushkin's one, PNY is one. Okay. And when you present, you're presenting one manufacturer. So you have to find both your kinds of memory from the same manufacturer. Name. You're picking the manufacturer. We'll get to that in a minute. Look at the top right corner. It says on Max's machine, pass one, test four of six. Okay. So what that's saying is that this is doing six different tests on the memory, and it's on the first pass of it. Until that, no that pass number, until that pass number, I'm talking to you, gets above one, it hasn't finished yet. It hasn't finished the whole thing. It will do pass after pass after pass forever. Okay, until you tell it to stop. So if I send you out to test a system that's a Windows 7 system, you're probably going to use this one because the most of them are less than 4 gig of RAM. And you're going to let it run it until it's passed, pass number one, and you know you're done. You can see it says succeeded in green down there. It says active in blue, and it will say failed in red. And the other thing that you'll see early on if it's usually going to pass or fail is right here where it says system memory map you'll see stuff scrolling by there at, at amazing rate of speed. If you see stuff just going by, it's probably going to fail. Okay. If I send you out to do a test to one that we think is bad, I have to change your BIOS, uh, to, that we think is bad, you're going to want to do the full test. And if you look on the top left side, it says pause, exit, and then T to run the extended test. So we're going to wait for Max's to finish the basic test before I hit T, because when I do hit T, it's going to start all over doing the extended test instead of the basic test, and I want to let his finish and make sure it's good first, okay? So this one goes in really fast, starts really fast. Okay, I'm, I'm lying. I'm going to go ahead and go into Max's. You can see it started over there, and now instead of doing six tests, it's doing 11 tests of Max's memory, okay? So that's the Windows memory diagnostic test. That's one of um, the tests that we're going to use. So what we get on the MEM test 501, See over here, we've got our, our cache and our kind of processor. We can see that we have a 2.261 megahertz or a 2.2 gigahertz processor. It says what our L1, L2, and L3 cache is on our system. Uh, then down here, it says what we've got in our system as far as memory. In slot 0, we've got a gig stick of DDR2-800. Slot 1, we've got a gig stick of DDR2-800. So we can see what kind of um, memory we've got in there. Here's us going through our test, but the big thing here is right here. What pass we're on and how many errors we have. Once we're on pass one, we know we've gone through the entire test once because the first test is past zero. So when we get past one, we're starting all over again. So if we're on any number here greater than zero, and this is zero, then we finished our memory test and our memory is all test good, okay? So that's the, the basics of what we're looking for on this test. Like I said, this one's slower than the Windows Memory Diagnostic, which is why it's our second choice of memory tests, although we get more information and it does a more thorough test. Right here. Um, we've got the timing on here, right? We've got that it's 13.33 and timing at 9.99, and the first one is our, our cast latency. And let's, first of all, what is cast latency? Okay, how many cycles of the motherboard it takes to read and write to this memory? Is that okay. my cast latency? Yes, the first one's always the cast latency number per your reading that I'm sure you all read. Okay, so, and cast latency is a way to compare, just like this is a way to compare, okay? So, it's the, this memory is going at 1,333 megahertz, and it takes, which is 1,333 cycles per second, and then the cast latency timing, meaning it's going to take um, nine cycles to do it. And I've got a couple... Um, couple just to kind of show you how to calculate access time because it's not out there anymore and I'm going to use this one as an example okay so this is DDR3 1600 okay so it cycles at 1600 million okay that's megahertz right that's in megahertz which is millions 
of cycles per second, okay? So what we want to do is turn it into how many seconds does it take? So we divide it, so what we do is we go and say 1 over 1600000000 to find out how fast a cycle is. And we're going to have that come out in nanoseconds so that we can do some math, okay? So if that's how much time it takes for one cycle, then we would multiply that by 9. equals a time in nanoseconds to access it, okay? Because this doesn't give us a time, this is just cycles. And this doesn't give us a time, it's just speed, okay? So we need to turn it into a time. So you would take one over this times this gives us some kind of time that it would be to access it, okay? So I would take, just with my calculator, and I would take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it easy and not do all the zeros. So I'm gonna do one over 1600 times nine, and I'm gonna come out with 5.6, 5.6 nanoseconds is how long it takes to access memory on that stick. Okay, that's how long it takes, okay? So, given this is our equation and how we figure out access time, my, my, what I want to get is this, okay? And I want to look at this one. I don't know it's not on anymore, there we go. I want to look at this one and talk about is one stick faster than the other, okay? So I've got this one, and when people look at it, they're going to say, okay, it's 1866, and it got a cast latency of 10. This one is um, 2400, okay? So if all I look at is the megahertz, that's all I look at. This one's definitely faster than this one. But our cast latency is different. This is a cast latency of 10, and this is a cast latency of 13. So when we go to buy, Everybody goes and says, ah, oh, this one's faster, it's 2400, than this one that's 1866. Nobody looks at this, and if you do, well, it's only three different. Okay, it's pretty close. Well, let's see what the actual time is, okay? So if I go and do, I'm going to do one over my 1866 times my 10, and that's going to get I'm going to come out with my access time. I'm going to go to here, 1 over 2400 times my 13 equals my access time. Okay? So if I go and do that quick math to do, to do my comparison of the two, I go 1 divided by 1866 times 10 equals 5.35. Okay? So we're going to say 5.35. Actually, I'm going to put 5.35, so we don't. Okay, so 5.35 is our nanosecond step. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and do the other one. 1 divided by 2400 times 13 equals 5.41. Which one's faster? This one's faster, okay? If it had been one cast latency smaller, this one would have be been faster. So you can't just look at this to say it's faster, okay? This is a, an extreme example that has been massaged by Mr. Cool because it was not a cast latency. But yeah, I guarantee you, if we spent enough time looking for it, we would find this exact example. So the cast latency is a good comparison if they're the exact same number. But if they're not the exact same number, neither one of them gives you an exact comparison. The only way to get an exact comparison is just to do this. One over the speed times the cast latency with the decimal places, because it's always 5.4, 4 point something, and 
the symptoms. Then it, it, just the decimal places really matter. I had some of it, you know, if I figured out the zeros and stuff, if, what happens if I was one decimal place off and this is 0.54 and then does it really matter? No. This number is smaller than this number. Even if I was off, then it was actually 0.5 nanoseconds at a, instead of 5 nanoseconds. That's inconsequential as long as you do the same one on each one, right? Okay? But, so, I mean, they're pretty dang close. But this one is faster. And if, and here's my example that I talked to him about this morning. This one is a normal speed that some motherboards take. This is a speed that almost no motherboard takes unless it's overclocked. Would I rather put this in overclocked slower than this one normal clocked slightly faster? I would rather have this one. Because when you overclock, you induce possible instability in your system. And some people, when they overclock it, more blue screens than other people. So if I was going to make this choice, if they came out to the exact same number, which these are pretty dang close, we're talking nanoseconds, okay, pretty darn close to the same speed, even if this one was faster by that amount, I would probably choose this one. It's like if the choice was between not overclocking and would not one be like overclocking. Well, depending on how big and stuff, be cheaper than. Well, probably because I don't know what HyperX is, so I don't know that as a company, so it probably is cheaper, but I don't know. I mean, just because I know Corsair is usually more expensive. Um, actually, Crucial is usually more expensive. Corsair is usually pretty, pretty uh, comparable to most other companies. So I, I don't know the answer to that. Theoretically, yeah, if it's the exact same thing, this one is probably going to be listed cheaper than a 2400. Okay. But that's just, that's when I, when I was talking access time, and that's in your reading, okay? If you go to your reading, it talks about figuring out the timing, um, and, and it wasn't straight forward like that. Um, but down here, understanding, under, understanding RAM timing, You can calculate the time the memory delays until it starts delivering data. The period of clock cycles so you need to be calculating using the formula one minus whatever over. It's a little bit the way that I figured it out, but it's the same thing. Okay, you're inverting the um, frequency of the RAM or whatever the megahertz is, uh, and then then you actually multiply by the clock cycles. It doesn't say at all uh, to figure that out. Okay, so that's where I was saying access time normally. I have a chance to talk about this before we get there, so that's why I didn't take off the points for it. Okay, I will for you two now. Aha, that's what you get. Get out your laptops and get working on your PowerPoints. <laughs>